Hey everyone. So, okay, I thought I'd talk a little bit today about some of the stuff that people have been talking about or asking that I talk about. Um, obviously, I'm still in my apartment, so not quite doing that one, but there's only so much I can do at once, so bear with me. But for starters, um, I know some people have been asking, particularly on my photo blog, which um, if you don't know where that is, ask me and I'll tell you. But um, for those who know about my photo blog, a lot of people have been asking to post pictures of food that I make. So, okay, I'm trying to do a little bit more of that. But to that end, I am also starting to take a cooking class. Um, cooking, I guess I should use loosely because it isn't exactly cooking so much as baking for me because I've signed up for a cake class and for a bread class. What does that mean? Yeah, it's baking and I already know how to make bread. I worked in a bakery for five and a half years so I can make bread and I can make cake and I used to make wedding cakes but it was something I wanted to try and learning how to do something like this in Japanese ooh, sorry it's a little cold in here actually it's not as cold as it is back home but I am so weak when it comes to heat now and Japanese walls are about that thick <laughs> um, Japanese walls are really really thin so the heat stays nowhere <laughs> um, it just goes. It's really, really bad for insulation and energy and all of that. No wonder people are so energy efficient here because the buildings certainly aren't. So you have to be, otherwise you're going to be paying out the nose. Um, anyway, I digress. So <clears throat> I really wanted to start taking a class because I thought taking one in Japanese would be really fun. So I signed up for a cooking studio. Uh, it's a really, really big one. ABC, if anybody knows it. And my first bread lesson was this. Which is, um, it says, Kabocha to paprika gare no garetto. Um, so it's a Japanese pumpkin and uh, red uh, bell pepper bread, essentially. And it had a uh, mayonnaise mustard sauce on it. And it's really, really good. Um, now, I did make this, and it's really, really fun when you go in because. Unlike in your average cooking class that you would go to in the US, which honestly, to be fair, I haven't taken any, but from what I can tell is you don't have the same setup that this school does. You go in, you sign up for a class, it has to be, you know, whenever. They have their rules for signing up and for canceling and all of that. But you show up at your class, you have to bring an apron, you have to bring certain things with you, and you may not be doing the same thing as the other people in your class particularly for the bread course. For the cake course, I think everybody does the same thing. But for the bread ones, anybody can be doing anything. So you have, in my case today, four people doing four different breads. Makes for a busy teacher. Because you will have one teacher for a group of, I think, maximum five students. So you do have a really busy teacher sometimes. But she'll take you through step by step. And yes, I said she, because in particular, this school is for women only. Um, unless you go to the specific ones that are plus M, which means you can take a guy. I don't know much about that. But you go in and they give you instructions and they show you how to do every single step. It's not just, oh, please add the eggs. No, they show you exactly how to add the eggs, which is something I've never quite seen back in the U.S. I mean, they really show you exactly how to break the egg. You can't just break the egg however you want. No, you have to hit it on the table or on each other. Um, and I'm not sure why it matters, whether it makes it easier or not. I mean, I worked in a bakery. She said, roll the bread, and I immediately put it on the table and went to go do this. And she kind of looked at me like, what are you doing? And I wasn't allowed to do it. I had to do it her way, even though my method was the same thing but faster. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's fun to learn different ways to do it. But it's really interesting, the differences between the way, way you're taught here and the way you're taught back home. Now, if you take a professional, um, you know, if you learn to, if you go to school and study to become a chef, it may be the same thing where they teach you exactly how to do each thing. That's entirely possible, but I've never gone through that kind of training, so I'm not used to it. And it was really interesting because I'm sure there's a few things that they and I are going to disagree on because I did work in a bakery for five and a half years. I'll try it their way and then when I get home I'll do it my own way <laughs> but we'll see how it works so I did make it and um, for one class you get to take home whatever you make of course and this time I got a nice little box for my stuff just like I did last time with my cake but this box has the bread in it 
Let's see. I don't want to hold it up too high, but let's see. You can see them in there. Just in case you can't see it very well. I don't want to hold this over my computer too much, but... I think it looks pretty close to the picture. They do a really good job walking you through step by step how to make it look just like the picture. And they of course will give you a box if it's something that needs to sit flat like these or they'll give you a plastic bag to put them in if it's something that can just be tossed in. Um, something like pound cake they give you plastic wrap to wrap it up and throw it in the box. But <coughs> mm, breathing wrong, sorry. But something I found really interesting is of course they give you this sheet which then has all the instructions detailed instructions on exactly how to cut the peppers exactly how to cut the olives and then afterwards your teacher goes through each step and reviews everything with you now keep in mind this is all done in Japanese unless you go to the special schools that have English um, I'm too lazy to find one of those schools and they're not exactly close to me so I just do it in Japanese because there are pictures so if I don't understand I can look um, plus, they show you how to do everything, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, but she goes through and she'll give you all the temperatures and all of the detailed information. She'll tell you, oh, this recipe said this, but you can substitute this. So, for example, the sauce had a mayonnaise mustard sauce. She said, well, you don't have to use mustard. You can use curry powder. Things like that. Um, I found it really helpful, and she also explained why for some things. Now, a lot of the answers I knew for this one because I am very familiar with bread, but she did explain why some of the numbers were what they were and all of that. And I, I thought that was really great because this isn't just a class that's teaching you how to make this one thing. This is a class that's teaching you how to do this sort of thing. So I can make pretty much anything like this and I understand the finer points, which is really, really nice. So I did take that cooking class and that was really fun. Another point I kind of wanted to talk about though, and another reason I decided to make a video on this, because I'm sure some of you are wondering why, I don't care about your cooking class, um, is actually because when I went to sign up, I went with a friend who was visiting from the US, and we took kind of a model lesson of sorts, and when I went to sign up, they asked me, okay, how do you want to pay? And I said, well, I know that there's a in, an installment plan, so can I do that? And she said, do you have a permanent resident visa? And of course, my first thought is that's none of your business. But of course, I said, well, no. And she said, well, then you can't sign up for the installment payment. You have to pay all at once. And I was like, okay, well, then can I use my card? She said, no, you have to do a bank transfer because you don't have a permanent resident visa. And I said, well, I don't see why it matters. My visa is longer than the contract here. My current visa I'm holding lasts longer than the contract and she said sorry you can't unless you have a permanent visa a permanent resident visa and I think that really shows how the discrimination of sorts really does come through in Japanese society not because people are trying to be difficult most of the reasons or most of these things actually do have you know foundation <laughs> um, they really do come from somewhere so no doubt they've had problems in the past where people sign up and go on the installment plan, take a whole bunch of lessons, and then leave without paying. I'm sure it's possible, and I'm sure it's been done, and no doubt they got burned, which is what happens a lot of the time. But then these rules never change. So on one hand, you could say, yeah, Japan's discriminating against me. Yeah, and on some level it is true. On the other hand, I say, screw you to all of the people who have messed this up for me. It uh, doesn't really matter, I was able to sign up anyway, I just had to pay a lot of money up front, and I wasn't very happy about that. But it doesn't just extend to things like classes. It also extends to, you know, signing for apartments, you know, you want to rent somewhere, you have to pay special fees, you have to, um, go to places that'll accept someone who's foreign because how many places you'd want to go to I, probably half of those are gonna be saying sorry no foreigners allowed and it it really is something that's prevalent here simply because there are a lot of people who come here and act really respon irresponsibly and hopefully living here I hope I've been you know showing my landlady that she hasn't made a mistake by letting me come here Hopefully when I sign up and I go through my cooking classes, they see it's really not such a bad thing to let, you know, everybody join in 
but I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong and I don't know it. <laughs> so there are a lot of things about Japan that will drive you nuts, but it's such a great place to live overall that I think it's forgivable and you can expect someplace to change overnight. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is do the best you can. If you want to come to Japan, that's fine. Expect it. Know it's going to happen. Um, that doesn't make it okay, but you have to understand that's just the way things are right now. Things are changing, but slowly. And your behavior, or really anybody, mine and everybody else living here, it directly affects how people are treated. So yeah, sure, there's going to be things going wrong. But as long as you do your best and do what you can to try to show people that it's really okay, we're, we're people too, and most younger people already know that, but they're not in power they don't have the power yet so until then we'll do what we can but anyway I'm really happy I took my cooking class today it was really fun um, I'm glad I could share it with you and a little bit of my thoughts on the whole discrimination thing I don't know in the end I guess it's not so bad I'm still here right but anyway hopefully next time will be something much happier overall and I hope to see you again soon cheers